All right, hello everybody. Um, this is our last review video for the year. So, well, before the final one. This is our last test review video, if you will. Um, so we're going to go through, there's one little thing that we're going to learn um, in the video, and then we're going to go through all the review problems. Um, I'll do the odds, you guys will be responsible for the evens. So first thing, changes in dimensions, okay? You're going to have to know how to, um, how surface area is affected and how volume is affected. So it says if the scale factor of two similar solids is A to B, then the ratio of their corresponding areas is A squared to B squared. And uh, so squared, right, for area. And then the ratio of their volumes is A cubed to B cubed. So essentially, your surface area gets squared, you know, the whatever the scale factor is. Okay, the scale factor one gets squared. And then your volume scale factor gets cubed. So here we go. It says a prism has a surface area of 50 centimeters squared. If the dimensions are doubled, so that's our scale factor, doubled. Okay, so SF for scale factor. How many times greater is the new surface area and what is the new surface area? So basically uh, we take our uh, scale factor, 2. And since it's surface area, we square it. So 2 squared is 4. So if your dimensions are doubled, your surface area is actually 4 times. 4 times greater. And so what does that mean? Well, you take your original 50, and you multiply it by the number of times greater, so 4 times greater. So the new area would be 200 centimeter squared. So it's four times greater, so the square of the scale factor. And then you take that squared scale factor and you multiply it by the original area. And you get 200. Okay, so now this one here. It says a pyramid has a surface area of 75 inches squared. A smaller pyramid has dimensions one-fourth the size. The surface area of the smaller pyramid is blank the size of the original. So this is just asking us to take uh, to square that scale factor. So you take your one fourth and you square it. Okay. And so when you're squaring it, you square the top number, so we get one squared, and then you square the bottom number. So one squared over four squared. So one squared is one, four squared, four times four, sixteen. So it's one sixteenth the size of the original. Okay, now volume. It says a prism's dimensions are quadrupled. So that means times 4, right? Okay, if the original volume is 200 centimeters cubed, what is the new volume? So this is volume, so we take our scale factor of 4 and we cube it. So 4 cubed. 4 times 4 times 4. 64. So our new one is going to be 64 times the original one. So take your original, 200 and you multiply it by 64. And so when you do that, you do 200 times 64, you get 12,800, and it would be centimeters cubed. So when you're dealing with volume, take the scale factor, cube it, multiply by the original. And this is an example of a kind of test question right here. All right, next one. This is another kind of test question. It says a company makes two sizes of its product in a cylindrical container. One has a volume of 750 centimeters cubed and a diameter of 9 centimeters. The other has dimensions that are one-fifth the size of the original. The smaller container has blank the volume of the larger. So we're just trying to figure out like what uh, portion of the larger one the smaller one's going to have. So it's like the one up here uh, where we just took the scale factor and squared it. Except this time we're talking about volume. So we're going to take that scale factor, one-fifth, and we're going to cube it. So one is going to get cubed, 
and the 5 is going to get cubed. So 1 cubed, that's 1 times 1 times 1, that's 1. 5 cubed, 5 times 5 times 5, comes out to be 125. So the small one is 1 125th the size of the large one. So the last two examples, those are the kind of questions you're going to have on that test tomorrow because they're dealing with volume. Surface area, you'll see on the final. Okay, number one, it says find the volume of the cylinder shown below. Round to the nearest tenth. Okay, cylinder volume is big B times H. So big B, it's a circle, right? So we have pi r squared. Okay, in this case, they give us 12, that's our diameter. So our radius is 6. So you have to do pi times 6 squared, so 36 pi. And then we need h, we need the height of our cylinder, so h is 16. So v, we have big B times h, so big B, that's 36 pi times, I got the height, 16. And if we notice, it says round to the nearest tenth. So we just plug all of this into the calculator. And when you do that, you get 1,809.6. Okay, for question two, if you do the same thing, your answer will be 706.9. So make sure when you're working those out on your own, that's what you get. All right, number three. It says find the volume of a cone with a diameter of 24 centimeters and a height of five. You'll have to really pay attention to that. Diameter of 24. So if the diameter is 24, that means the radius has to be 12. Okay, and our height is five. For a cone, the volume is one third area of the base times the height. So for big B, a cone, okay, remember the area is a circle, so pi r squared. So pi times 12 squared. So that's 144 pi. And it says to leave our answer in terms of pi. So now we just have to plug in. V equals one third times, okay, big B is 144 pi, and then our height is 5. So we're leaving in terms of pi, so we're going to multiply the one third, the 144, and the 5. And when you do that, you come out, okay, you come out with 240 pi. So that would be your answer there. So area of the base, pi r squared, times the height that they give you, and then you get 240 pi. Okay, on our other one over here, number four, you'll come out with 320 pi, if you work it out correctly. Okay, number five. It says, how much cement will be required to fill the mold shown below? All right, so we have to look very carefully here because you will see this on the test. Um, this is in feet, this is in feet, whereas this guy here is inches. So you have to convert inches to feet. So one foot is 12 inches. So basically take your inches and divide by 12. So 36 divided by 12, you get 3. So 36 inches, that's 3 feet. So now this is a rectangular prism, so our volume is area of the base times the height. Okay, we can use any of these sides as the base because they're all rectangles. So I'm just going to use this one here. Area of the base, we've got to do base times height because it's a rectangle. So 1 times 4, which is 4. Okay, now the height, that's the distance between the two of the same. So the height is going to be our 3. So volume, area of the base, 4, times the height, 3. Volume is 12 feet cubed. 
All right, now our next one, um, if you do this one correctly, you should come out with 30. So be careful with converting that 48 inches. So you will have to do unit conversions, and it's just between inches and feet. That's all you got to remember for tomorrow. Number seven, what is the volume of a hemisphere whose radius is nine? So R is nine. So, and we have to leave it in terms of pi, so we're not going to multiply pi in. So our volume for a sphere, it's four-thirds pi r cubed, but it's a hemisphere, so we need to divide that by two. So we'll just plug in four-thirds times pi times nine cubed, and then divide by two. So... When we plug this in, we get 4 thirds times 9 cubed and divide it by 2. Okay, we should come out with 486, but since we didn't put pi, it's 486 pi. And it'll be meters cubed. Okay, on this one, if you work this one out here, um, you'll get... 13,122 pi yards cubed. So just remember the hemisphere, you just take the sphere and divide it by two. Okay, find the volume of the triangular prism. Okay, so we've got a triangle for our base because it's a triangular prism. Okay, so there's one triangle. And then here's our other triangle back here. So we have to uh, find the base and the height of our triangle because volume is big B times H. And big B, since this is a triangle, it's going to be one half base times height. So one half times, well, look for that right angle right here. So we can see we have the eight. That's one side of it. Then you have this back part right here. Well, it's not labeled back here, but it's labeled on the front. It's the 6. So it's a 1 half 8 times 6. And so 6 times 8 is 48. Half of that, 24. So that's big B. Now H, the distance between our two triangles, that bridge going between them, the 12. So our volume is 24 times 12. And when you multiply that, you get 288. Okay, over here, uh, number 10, when you work that one out correctly, you'll get 1,215. Um, and it would be meters cubed. On both of those, actually. Okay, number 11. It says a rectangular prism has a volume of five cubic inches. If the length, width, and height are all changed to four times their original size, what will be the new volume? Okay, so we've got our scale factor, it's four, and we have our original volume of five. So we have to take, and this is volume, so you have to take our scale factor, four, and cube it. So four to the power of three, four times four times four. So that's 64. And then all you do is take your original volume, 5, and you multiply it by that uh, cubed scale factor. So multiply it by 64. So 5 times 64 is 320. So it would be 320 inches cubed. Okay, number 11, or I'm sorry, number 12, if you work that one out, you get 2,700 centimeters cubed. 13. What is the volume of the square pyramid? Okay, volume of a pyramid. It's one-third area of the base times the height. So big B, since it's a square, okay, it's just is base times height, or side times side, okay? So 5 times 5, so 25. Now the height is going to be 7. 
Okay, and on the test and on here, um, these ones just, unless it says otherwise, round it to the nearest tenth, because obviously we can't do pi because they're not cones, but just round it to the nearest tenth. So volume is one third times 25 times 7. Okay, so now just plug this whole thing into the calculator, and when you do, you get 58.3, and then it would be inches cubed. So that's with the rounding and all that done. So remember, area of the base times that height of the actual pyramid. Okay, number nine, uh, number 14, if you fill everything in correctly, you should get 192 on that one. Okay, 15 says, what is the volume of the cone? Round to the nearest tenth. So whenever we're doing all of our calculations, we can include pi into it. Um, the only thing that you should not do is when you're getting the first area of the base, leave that as it is. Like, leave that one in terms of pi. So, um, volume, it's one-third area of the base times the height. So, area of the base, we got a circle here. So, it's pi r squared. So, pi times, and then r is 11, so pi times 11 squared. So, it's 121 pi. So, we're going to leave that as that right now. h is 24. So, volume is one-third times 121 pi times our height, which is 24. So now to keep, uh, we're just going to plug all of this into the calculator so we can get this in the nearest tenth. Um, so just type this in as is. And when we do, we get 3,041.1 meters cubed. Okay, number 16, when you plug that one in, you get 5,579.5 meters cubed. Okay, 17. It says a cylinder has a volume of 45 inches cubed and a diameter of 10 inches. If the dimensions of the new cylinder are one-fourth the original, then the new cylinder will be blank times as big. Okay, so they're not asking us to actually calculate anything. They're just simply asking us, if we take the scale factor and we cube it, what do we get? So, take your one-fourth and cube it. Okay, so that's one cubed over four cubed. So 1 cubed, 1 times 1 times 1 is 1, and 4 cubed is 64. So it would be 1 64 times as big. So it's getting much, much, much smaller. Okay, 18. If you do 18, you should find that you get it's 1 27th. Okay, number 19. Um, these figures are not the exact figures for 19 and 20 that you're going to have on your test, but, um, the concept is the same. On both of these, you're adding. So you find the volume of the top, find the volume of the bottom, and then you add them together. So for this one, we got to find the volume of the cylinder. Okay, so that's area of the base times the height. So for the cylinder, area of our base is pi r squared, so pi times, well, look at our cylinder on top. We have the line going all the way across. So that 4 is our diameter, so our radius is actually 2. So pi times 2 squared, so again, leave this in terms of pi, so that's 4 pi. And then now the height of the cylinder part is 4. Now, as far as calculating the volume, you see since on here, this is a rectangular prism, we can go ahead and do the volume in terms, uh, like, to the nearest tenth, because 
the volume on the bottom is going to come out as a whole number anyway, so there won't be any rounding errors. So for this one, just plug in area of the base, so 4 pi times the height, which is 4. So just do 4 pi times 4 in the calculator. And so what you get is 50.3. So that's the volume of your cylinder. Now I gotta do the volume of the prism. So again, it's area of the base times the height. So the area of our base is base times height, because this is a rectangle, okay, or a square actually. So we have five times five, so that's 25. The height of the prism part is five. So we have 25 times five, which is 100. 25. So now what you got to do is take the two and add them together. So our total volume is 125 plus the 50.3. So you get 175.3 inches cubed. Okay, and then number 20. Um, on this one, you're going to want to do the top part in terms of pi, the bottom one in terms of pi, and then add them. So when you do that one, you get 188.5. And remember, you're going to plug pi in after you've done the top plus the bottom. Okay, number 21. It says, what is the volume of a sphere? with a diameter of 72 centimeters. Leave your answer in terms of pi. So diameter is 72. So our radius means we have to do 72 divided by 2, which is 36. So our radius is 36. So volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So the volume is 4 thirds times pi times 36 cubed. And again, it says leave it in terms of pi, so you're going to do 4 thirds times 36 cubed, and it's going to be really big, so it's going to give you 62,208, and we can't forget it, pi centimeters cubed. So yes, guys, some of your volume answers will be quite large, and that is okay, because we're cubing stuff. We're multiplying it by itself three times. Okay, number 22. Um, if you plug that in correctly, you'll get 121.5 pi. And again, y'all, these questions are exactly like test questions. It's just different numbers. That's all we're asking you to do is different numbers. All right, 23 and 24 are a little bit interesting. Um, you're actually having, it's two steps, okay? So 23, it says, a rectangular suitcase filled with money can hold 150 stacks of bills. What is the volume of the suitcase if each stack of bills has the dimensions pictured? Round to the nearest tenth. So basically, we've got a suitcase and we're, putting a bunch of stacks this size within the suitcase and we need to figure out how big all the stacks are together. So we're going to find the volume of one stack and then multiply it by the number of stacks we have. So volume, this is a rectangular prism, so it's big B times H. So big B, it's base times height. So we'll just use the top here as our base. So it's 6.25 by 3. So you get 6.25 times 3. So when you do that, you get 18.75. So that's the area of the base. Now the height is at 0 0.75 inches. So we're going to plug this in 18.75 times... 0 0.75 and we will get um, that the area of our base or I'm sorry the volume not the area of the base 
the volume is 14.0625. And yes, you need to keep all these numbers. So that's why we, you know, can carry the answers in our calculator so we don't lose any uh, numbers on the other. So you get the 14.0625, and then that's just for one stack of bills. We have 150 of these stacks. So you have to take the volume and multiply it by 150. So we take our 14.0625 and we multiply it by 150. And when you do that, you get 2,109.4 inches cubed. So that would be the volume of all the money in the suitcase, which is what the suitcase holds. Okay, number 24, if you do this one, it's 249.4 inches cubed. All right, last couple problems here. It says a cylindrical fish tank at the zoo has a diameter of three feet and a height of 14 feet. What is the volume of the water to the nearest tenth? So we're not going to worry about leaving pi out. We're just going to plug everything in. So it's a cylinder. So volume is area of the base times the height. Since it's a cylinder, area of the base is pi r squared because we've got that circular base. So pi times, now you have to read carefully, it's a diameter of 3 feet. So our radius, you got to do 3 divided by 2. So it's 1.5. Okay, so now we have to do 1.5 squared. So when you do that, you get 2.25 pi. And then the height is 14. So volume, okay, we get 2.25 pi times 14. If you plug that in, you get 99 feet cubed. And then for number 26, you get 63.6 inches cubed. Okay guys, so now your job is to go through and do the evens and make sure that you get those done correctly because again, this is exactly like every test question. Okay, I wrote the review to match the test. So if you're able to do all these, um, you'll be able to do well on the test. And remember, you can pause the video, rewind it, watch it again. Okay, it's on Canvas, it's on YouTube, so there's no excuse why you should not be prepared for that test tomorrow. There's only this one little thing, and all you really have to remember for the test are these two kind of problems. That's it. Okay? So watch this, please watch it again tonight, do the review, and you'll do just fine tomorrow. See you guys later. Bye.